This is our lucky day. This is our lucky day, and this is... Our lucky day. Hello reformers and welcome back to a world of ice and fire. Now when we left off we had a couple of, well shall we just say setbacks, a couple of pretty serious setbacks actually where we were attempting to take this particular castle and it wasn't going extremely well although we did defend ourselves against some pretty strong opponents and we, well, we found out that the retreat mechanics are vastly different from many other mods, and as a result, it is punishing to the player, even if you retreat when your enemy has many less units than you do. For example, when I only had about, what, 10 enemies remaining, and I wanted to retreat to, you know, auto-resolve and basically finish them off, and because they're horse archers, I really wanted to do that super badly because they are so annoying to fight. Just earlier, I was in a battle with a, uh, a band of, well, seemingly random units, and uh, among them was some sand scouts or something along those lines, dune scouts or something, and those guys are basically horse archers, and I was literally running around the battlefield for about 15 minutes, literally after this one guy, because I only had a very small army at the time, and I didn't have any cavalry, and, uh, well, basically no one could kill him, no one could kill him, and he wasn't doing anything either, he wasn't actually shooting at us or anything, he was just running around in circles, kind of crazy. Anyway, you may have already noticed that we do have a slightly different army composition than what we had previously. And uh, you may also notice that we are kind of doing well in terms of money. Now, I found a couple of other, well, not, not really new trade routes, but basically I've just been doing the, the circuit, you know what I mean? Just doing the, the whole circuit. I've actually purchased another ship as well because I really, really wanted to get that extra you know, uh, army capacity, just in case we have to very quickly rush over to some place. But anyway, basically what I've been doing, if we zoom out here, maybe you'll take a look and see if there's a couple of other things going on in the land. There doesn't seem to be that much movement in regards to people actually taking things. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that, but I guess uh, people are just a bit lazy, maybe. Anyway, point is, uh, yeah, if you go to Mir and you go to Pentos at the very least, you're going to be finding basically almost a full marketplace full of fur, or at least that's how it, that, that, that's how it is for me. And uh, yeah, you can already see my date down in the bottom right there, that the date is just insane. I've spent so much time in this mod already off screen, and it's kind of a shame to be honest, because there are many cool things that I'd like to show, but they're just so small, it doesn't really make that much difference. Among them, however, there is actually something that uh, you might like to take a look at. You'll see it on screen right now. Basically, there is a system in the game where there are a couple of people. I think these are the people that basically tell you where travelers are, where ransom brokers are, and so on and so forth. And they also have the ability to spread rumors. And I was spreading rumors about a certain individual that we were fighting in a previous episode. And he's already severely intimidated by us, according to certain comments, certain story time comments, shall we say. And uh, yeah, I thought we might want to pursue that storyline a little bit by spreading some rumors about him. Unfortunately, my second rumor did not succeed, and as a result, uh, I actually lost some relation with him, because he, he actually found out that it was me that uh, was <laughs> uh, behind, the, uh, behind the whole thing. Anyway, what we're going to do right here is, once again, we're just going to try and starve them out. We're not going to do anything specific. We're just going to try and starve them out. And we're going to do this. And we're going to loot and destroy all the crops nearby. And all that wonderful stuff. I have gone around to all the towns as quickly as I could. And gained a full inventory of different food. So that I don't have to worry about morale problems or anything like that. So hopefully that's going to be okay. I'm actually going to... Should I build mantlets? Hmm, I'll build mantlets just anyway. I don't think I'm going to actually be heading in here. This, 
This action that I'm taking right now, oh yeah, and I also got this guy to spread some right to rule for me, and he's just returned. Fantastic. And you may have also noticed that I've changed my name slightly to, uh, well, shall we say match my weapon choice and uh, some alternate timeline as well. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then I'd highly recommend going to my channel page and just typing in Clash of Kings or something like that, and you'll get a whole bunch of uh, playlists and all kinds of wonderful stuff where there are many, many different storylines and uh, cool things that happen in the in the world of Game of Thrones in a different mod of course but it is still very exciting and ooh hello I was not expecting so many enemies I was expecting maybe one or two but this guy has brought three and we're actually up against 867 here's the thing I actually don't mind this I planned for this to be a thing so what we're going to be doing is taking the field and facing our opponent. And we're going to be facing them in utter glorious battle because we have so many unsullied. And that is exactly what I intended to do with this episode. We are going to sweep across Volantis and eliminate and slaughter and hunt down and hopefully assassinate their vassals. And that is exactly what we're going to try. But if we're unable to do that, of course, then we will at least have done some significant damage. <laughs> that used to be a catchphrase of mine. I used to say, let's do some significant damage. Yes, it used to be a catchphrase a long time ago. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, generally I do tend to have a couple of catchphrases every now and again. But obviously that's just how it is. When you make so many episodes of a certain thing, you are bound to repeat yourself at some point. Anyway. My people are in ranks right now, as you can see, look at that. Look at what a glorious view that is. So many unsullied in that insanely cool formation. Now, of course, I do have Dongo here, and I do have Woon Woon. I know someone said that it's not Woon Woon, it's it's One One or something, but personally, I feel like Woon Woon sounds cuter, so I don't really mind whether I call him Woon Woon or not because I'm sure he doesn't mind, you know? I'm sure he's perfectly fine being called something cute instead of something menacing, like 1-1. One -one. <laughs> Even though, well, I guess 1-1 one -one is okay as well. I mean, it's, I'm not, not saying anything against the name 1-1, one -one, obviously, but anyway, uh, I'm not going to be charging anyone, by the way. I'm not going to be charging anyone at all. We're just going to be telling them to attack the cavalry division here. We're going to be telling them to fight in ranks as much as humanly possible. And uh, that's basically what we're going to do. We're going, we're going to skirmish. We're going to skirmish with them. And we are going to wholeheartedly make sure that they will not be getting easy kills on us. No easy kills for them. Eliminated one of their leaders immediately. And we are going to do exactly what I planned. We're not going to lose our composure. Our composure is... is, uh, is very, very steadfast up against the Valentines here and we will do our very best and I'm actually going to tell them to uh, attack the infantry now because they are focusing on the cavalry which is not a good idea so let's tell them to focus on the infantry now and hopefully the various arrows that are streaming in from across the way there will not do too much damage now of course what I'm trying to do right now is keep as mobile as possible this was not my plan obviously getting stopped right there but Keeping as mobile as possible is a really good plan. Anyway, I'm actually going to charge in right now because we do quite desperately need to eliminate the various infantry that are attacking us right here. And once we have eliminated them, we might go back into a formation. I'm actually kind of surprised that our giant over there is not drawing that much attention. But, oh well, never mind. Okay, so we're going to tell them to once again hold position, and I'm going to tell everyone instead to now go into a shield wall. Hopefully my spearmen will form the shield wall, and we will tell them. We are getting reinforcements as well, by the way, so I mean we've only lost about 70 or so, which is actually not even bad. So we're going to tell them to attack the archer division now if they can. can could they attack the archer division maybe? Ugh, it seems like that is actually not working for some reason. Don't exactly know why that is. But I guess we will tell them to just go forward and see what they are able to do about the Archer Menace. Uh, it seems like... Hmm. Seems like this might not work. 
This might not work as I intended, but we'll see. Uh, they're going to attack the cavalry again. That's fine. That's fine. Eliminate the cavalry. Try and take out as many units as possible. And we will be, of course, fighting alongside our unsullied comrades here. And I will try to stay alive to the best of my ability, unfortunately. Ah, yes. Unfortunately, that did not happen at the very end there. But that's okay. That's fine. I feel like, oh, look at this. We are, oh, yeah, our reinforcements coming in here are just absolutely devastating the enemy units. And this is exactly what we want to see. Even if, and I'm going to say this, even if a bunch of, you know, even if we lose a bunch of Unsullied here, this is probably most of their very strong vassals. I have taken one of them prisoner in the past. When I was doing off screen, there was someone that was raiding my village. He only had about 40 units or so. So I basically just went over there, attacked him with literally just my companions. I only had my companions in my army at the time because I really didn't want to run around with a huge army and, you know, have morale problems, you know, food consumption problems and so on and so forth. So I basically just ran around with my companions. And we defeated him pretty easily, actually, with just our companions, because he didn't really have very strong units or anything like that, so it wasn't, uh, wasn't a big surprise. But that's a testament to how strong our companions are, and speaking of that, that actually spurred me on to get our companions some additional gear, and I haven't given them anything too extravagant because I, I, as I say, I've, I've basically been spending my entire money on getting additional enterprises. I actually only bought another two enterprises, and uh, or three, I'm not entirely sure. Bought a ship, obviously, and uh, bought a couple of uh, unsullied groups. Uh, yes, a couple, a couple, not not, a, not too many, obviously. <laughs> yes, we do have quite a few. Anyway, point is. We don't have that much money to spend on our companions, unfortunately, but I did give them all relatively good shields, and I personally feel like that is a good investment, because getting them shields is going to make their survivability just multiply like no one's business, like bunnies. It's gonna They're going to multiply their survivability like bunnies, and they will be able to uh, survive against archers much, much easier. And... <laughs> this is actually going extremely well. I gotta say that I'm quite surprised about this because I really thought that maybe we would have some problems, but the Unsullied are amazing. And uh, yeah, it's just a shame actually that I was not able to recruit the Moon Brothers. Yeah, uh, I think someone told me about the Moon Brothers. They're very, very close by to my uh, current fief and they have about 500 units in their army, and you can recruit them for 120,000 silver stags. And let me just say, well, I do have that. I have 120,000, but I don't have the army space. Yeah, I tried it. <laughs> I did try it. Unfortunately, they said, oh, we're sorry, you can't take all of us, so we're not coming. That's basically what they said. I had about 300 capacity, because I won two tournaments as well, in Sunspear and in Planky Town, which is an absolutely adorable name for a town. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it's not an adorable place to live, but I'm, I'm sure it's, you know, it's got a pretty cute name. Anyway, point is... I was able to win two uh, two tournaments there, so obviously a little bit of extra renown for us as well, because obviously in the previous episode, I did end up losing quite a bit of renown, thanks to the uh, wonderful retreat mechanics. Anyway, as you see here, we're not really retreating this time, we are going full on to the end. And uh, whatever happens will happen. And uh, I'm hopeful that in the next round, because no doubt there will be a next round, I will be able to survive a little bit more because I'm always a bit disappointed when I get eliminated so quickly that my shield is still intact. I mean, you can see right there, thanks to A World of Ice and Fire's UI, I can see that I have 80% durability left on my shield, and that is an absolute atrocity. I feel like that's really, really bad of me to die before my shield is destroyed because usually, you know, if you, if you survive a decent amount of time, your shield's going to be destroyed by something, whether that be a huge two-handed axe or many, many, many arrows. 
But uh, in in this case, no, no. I just got my my head sliced a little bit open, you know, just a little bit, not not deadly, uh, you know, by uh, a passing horseman. So that was that was very good. I'm I'm terribly sorry, Elias. Uh, he's not he's not very happy. I mean, he he knows me, you know. He knows me from all the way back in the uh, Clash of Kings series, where uh, well. He would go to town, you know, he'd go to town and he'd do an absolutely fantastic job of slaughtering everyone in our path and then I'd fall off the ladder and die. That's basically how, I, how it would go. But uh, yeah, anyway, there you go. 48 renown. And we have 177 casualties. 123 wounded though, which is pretty good. How many do we eliminate? 450. And Elias's pitiful, uh, pitiful kill count is only 16. Wow. Yeah, he, he needs to do much better. Actually, I need to do much better. Elias is doing all that he can. It's just me that's uh, not really doing the business here. But anyway, 450 eliminated. How many do we have left? Because I have about 270, I believe. So we have about 100 remaining. Do you think 100 can deal with 450? I don't think so. We have 121, actually. Uh, hmm. We might be able to do it. It is time to take to the field once more, dear friends, and, uh, well, we'll see what the enemy has in store for us this time. I am a little bit, uh, a little bit more confident this time because, as you can see, we are much more even. There is a battle advantage of minus one, but that's actually nothing. That's actually okay, you know? I, I don't mind that. Minus one's okay. We had minus five before, so you can imagine just how difficult that was for us to deal with but hopefully this time around we will be in a much better spot uh, the only problem is there are well there's basically every single unit that we have in our army on the field right now so if we see our numbers dwindling too much we will have to retreat and uh, we'll see how we do and uh, yeah otherwise I'm not entirely sure what I can do after that I I could run around and do a little bit of skirmishing here and there, because I do have a huge amount of wildling units in my garrison. Hopefully I'm not going to die from all those archers, thank you. Yeah, anyway, I do have a huge amount of wildling units, so generally I would be able to, well, perpetrate a huge, huge amount of skirmishing and uh, not actually even lose that much. So that might be... Uh, that might be a thing, you know. That might be uh, that might be something that we could look into. But uh, yeah, I guess for the moment, I'm not entirely sure. I am thinking of charging my units in just to eliminate these cavalry quickly. But I want them to kind of stay in formation for the moment because if we split up right now, then the cavalry might have a slightly easier time of dealing with us. And this is what I mean. Every single cavalry seems to run away and do these hit and run attacks. It's very frustrating, especially considering some of them might be horse archers and everything. And those horse archers are, oh, they're, they're fiendish. They are absolutely fiendish. Okay, so it, ah, they have destroyed the cavalry division apparently. So let's tell them to instead attack. Oh, not enough. To, oh, yes, not enough troops. And yes, that's fine. I don't need the infantry to form ranks right now, thank you very much, but let's just continue slaughtering as much as we can, and we'll see. Ah, uh, yeah, that was bad, okay. I was hopeful that I might be able to eliminate those guys. Let's try and uh, help out whoever this is. I'm not entirely sure which giant this is, sorry. Can't tell the difference between them. I think this is Woon Woon, actually. I think. I think it is, but it doesn't doesn't really matter right now. We're just going to stay at range and eliminate their infantry as much as we can. I actually think that our uh, our mistake in or shall we say my mistake in the previous ep oh, episode. No. Well, yes, in the, in the in the previous episode, there's many mistakes. But the point is, previously in the battle, I feel like my mistake was to run in, not not me specifically, but to put my units so close to the enemy's archers. Because right now, look at this. Look at what's happening right here. Our units are getting run into by their cavalry and they're, they're literally just sending them in to die, basically. There's, there's nothing that they can do. They cannot break these ranks. There's no way. There's no way they'll be able to do that. So having this kind of formation be a thing right now 
is pretty fantastic. Do bear in mind, however, I am tired. Look at that. Elias is tired. His stamina is drained. And uh, that's a that's a pretty big testament. Oh, okay. So it seems like the archers are now starting to attack. How many have we eliminated so far? Only a hundred? Ooh, that's that's spicy. That is uh, that is kind of spicy. I'm not a big fan of that. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, this is a bit of a bit of a difficult situation. Oh, they've run out of arrows, have they? Oh, this is great. Okay, not so spicy then. I think it's okay then. That is fine. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> yes, get myself killed in the meantime. That's the way to do it. I'm just thankful that... Oh, there goes his head. There goes his head. All right, so they're out of arrows. I'm going to tell them to charge in. Tell all our guys to charge in. Mop up the last remaining archers. And uh, maybe... Oh, well, yeah, new enemies. New enemies are coming in. And... Uh, oh, some of them do have arrows. Some of them do have arrows by the looks of things. Oh, it seems like they do have arrows. Look at that. Okay, I'm actually exhausted. I am exhausted, so my damage is reduced. And I move at a snail's pace. And, uh, yeah, I could be killed very easily as a sitting duck. So I guess we're just going to have to rely on our units not taking too many casualties here. We've already lost 27, which is not good at all. I'm going to have to get in here and do as much damage as I possibly can, even though I am extremely tired right now. Elias is fighting with every single ounce of his, uh, of his being, basically. And uh, we're going to have to tell everyone to hold position once again. I don't know who's attacking us right now. Who's who's actually coming in? Oh, you are so tired, you can barely move a muscle. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, let's just tell them to hold position. We're going to get them into ranks once again. There we go. Form ranks, guys. Come on. Okay, uh, I, I really... You know what? I'm going to tell both of these guys just to just to charge around. Just to, just tell our uh, tell our giants just to charge around. Actually, should we? That's probably not the best idea, actually. Because if we do that, they're just going to die for nothing, really. We still have 90 units remaining. We've eliminated actually 250 now. And we only have 450 remaining of the enemy. So I think we should have a decent shot. I'm going to try and ride this camel. For no particular reason. I just like riding camels. Let's do it. Why not? This is a very slow camel, unfortunately. Uh, I was hopeful that it might actually help me to uh, regain some of my stamina. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this camel as a bit of a shield. And uh, no one's going to target a camel. I mean, really. They're very friendly. They might spit a little bit, but they're very friendly. And uh, yeah, in general, we probably don't want to, uh, you know, get this camel killed. So I'm actually going to move away from it now. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I talked myself out of it. Oh, well. Then my, ah, my stamina is now high. Fantastic. All my talking distracted me from being exhausted. And Elias was enthralled by my wonderful storytelling. What story, you ask? Camel stories. Camel stories. All right. So otherwise, what do we have here? We have a pretty bad situation. Yeah. It's a pretty bad situation. I am... Yeah, we, we... Oh, no. We're taking damage. Right. We're gonna have to do something here. We're gonna have to do something. And I'm talking about... Not charging in, thank you very much. That was a mispress. Fantastic. But what we're gonna do... Is we're gonna move upward. And I'm actually wondering... Do they, do they have any archers remaining? They must have archers remaining. I mean, really. These this, these are Valantines. They must have archers. I mean, really. Come on, now. If they don't have archers, I'm going to be extremely surprised. They don't seem to have archers. Really? This is our lucky day. This is our lucky day. And this is... Our lucky day. <laughs> right. Fantastic. Well, many of my units are now going to go charging in, and that's actually not even that bad. You know, we, we got them close. You know, we got the opponent to, you know, basically wear down their patience. And th that has somewhat, I guess, kind of paid off. And that means that they are running. Look at them. Look at them running in the distance, running away from the unsullied masses of death. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's actually, it's actually turning out pretty well. I, I guess, uh, you know what? I think it's my camel story. That's what, that's what happened. Yeah. It, uh, it bored them to death. It bored them to death so much that, uh, they basically just thought, okay, we're, we're coming over here and we're, we're going to try and kill that guy that's talking about camels. We can't, we can't have him talking about camels, you know? 
I have no idea how many times I've said camels now. It's a lot of times. <laughs> We're going to stop saying that now. Anyway, point is, kill this guy. Kill him. Voice command, kill. Oh, there we go. Fantastic Dongo. Very good Dongo. Oh, look at him. What a handsome beast. Yes, very handsome. He knows. He knows that. He absolutely knows that. Okay, so this is where the obligatory run around after the one horse archer comes into effect. And we're going to see how long it's going to take us to actually kill this guy. I am very surprised. It literally took another minute or so. I am very surprised. I guess it's because the Valantines aren't usually horse archers, so they're not going to be that difficult to eliminate when they're on their horses. But anyway, as you can see, 11 unsullied. Only. Only 11. And in general, we've basically lost only about 40 unsullied from the 280 roughly that we had initially. So we still have 240 remaining. Bear in mind, we've just eliminated another 360 enemy units. A little bit better this time, Elias. Very good. Very good. Getting 41 take downs this time. Dongo and Woon Woon still doing a fantastic job. I mean, really, how can you not see them as being absolutely crazy? Very pleased that I uh, that I chose the uh, <laughs> the start that I did. Otherwise, uh, as far as I'm aware, you can't recruit these. So there's that. That's pretty cool. Anyway, let us continue onward. Oh yes, we have 79 against 75. Let's do it. This is one of the largest battles that we've ever done, or shall we say, largest sequence of battles that we've ever done in a world of ice and fire. And uh, if you don't obviously include the uh, the ones where we basically died many, many times very easily. But uh, let's just, uh, you know, let's not talk about that. Let's just continue onward with our um, fantastic glory setting or uh, glorious path pathing. Uh, yes. Road to victory. That's it. Road to victory. Let's do this. All right. So I, I, I've got to remember. Here's the thing. Got to remember. Do not try to take too much at once. That's basically the thing that I generally tend to do way too much of. I tend to bite off way more than I can chew, and as a result, I make mistakes, and uh, those mistakes come back to absolutely bite me. And uh, especially considering A World of Ice and Fire is a very difficult mod. So, there's that. Anyway, let's see. Do they have any archers? Have we eliminated all of their archers so far? I have my horse once again, so I'm pretty happy about that. Will we be able to do a couple of hit and runs? They do have archers. That's a bit worrying. Yeah, that is a bit worrying. Okay, I guess what I'm going to do... I don't know, actually. <laughs> I guess what I'm going to do is actually just wait. All of our people have shields. I'm actually going to put them into shield wall formation. Is this the most you've seen me using formations? That's a rhetorical question. You don't need to answer it, but it is definitely the case. I don't usually use formations this much, but uh, World of Ice and Fire has basically forced me to. It's basically forced me into getting into uh, getting into the deeper strategy layer in regards to battles, because usually I don't use these that much. Maybe I'll use ranks every now and again for archers but I will never really use it otherwise. I think we should probably be able to win this battle without too many problems, so... Um, you know what? I'm just going to wait here. I'm just going to wait here. You don't have to wait with me, but, uh, you know, just think of me waiting. <laughs> you don't have to. Anyway, I'll see you in a little bit. Ah, and it seems like a little bit is now. They have decided to charge in once more, and this is bad for them. This is extremely bad for them. They're charging into our giants immediately. And uh, you can already tell that Dongo and Woon Woon, they're perfectly happy to have that happen. Anyway, uh, I actually think that we should just charge. I don't think we need to really worry too much about formations. Ooh, that's a... Oh no, we don't want to run into that guy. He's got a pretty menacing looking polearm. I'm going to try and assault some of the archers as much as possible here, because those archers are going to be... Oh, that was a nice jump and slash, wasn't it? Fantastic. It's been a while since I've done a nice jump and slash like that. Oh, I think I'm dead. No, nope, maybe not. Fearsome cry. Yes. Fearsome cry. Okay, there we go. Now we can tell everyone to charge in, and we can mop up the remaining units. 
And uh, do forgive me, by the way, for being a little bit cautious, but uh, I think uh, World of Ice and Fire has really taught me to have that have that extra patience when it comes to giving that final charge order, because if you give that charge order a little bit too early, you're going to suffer many, many casualties. And I'm not talking about you specifically, I'm just talking about one, you know, a, a person is going to suffer many casualties from doing that. And uh, I, I'm sure most of you already know that, but in general, you know, for those that don't, it's a, it's a pretty decent tip. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, otherwise, about tips, I very much appreciate any tips that you leave in the comments, by the way, because A World of Ice and Fire is a very harsh, harsh place. And it's nice to have every single, you know, little bit of uh, information that can help us out here and there. And there it is! A victory, finally, against some of the, well, more deadly vassals. And we do get to take him prisoner, yes, I'm I, I'm giddy with, well, not really, I guess, but I'm just going to be taking him prisoner. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, we're going to be taking him prisoner, too. Oh, yeah. We're going to be taking everyone prisoner. That's exactly what we like. All right, that is fantastic. That means that they have been removed from the battlefield, unless we accept a ransom for them, which we might do. It depends, because... Sometimes they'll offer about 10,000 per vassal. Otherwise, I'm not entirely sure in this mod whether you can... Uh, whether you can... Kill them. Whether you can... Uh, what is it now? What, am, what, what is the word I'm looking for? Execute. That's it. Whether you can execute the opponent. And uh, that would be pretty amazing. Because that would mean that they would not be able to come back at all. And that would give... Uh, it would give everything pretty uh, pretty good shot. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually just going to leave here. Because I I know that there's this guy, you see. There's this guy right here, and he's waiting for us to, uh, to exit and potentially loot the bodies. I actually still have 92. Isn't that amazing? I still have 92 units remaining ready for battle. Okay, so I actually lost many more Unsullied than I anticipated. I actually lost 200, uh, well, I didn't lose 200. I lost about 70, which is harsh, but we were up against it, absolutely up against it. It, it reminds me of the Spartans and everything. I think someone actually already, already said that in the comments that it reminds them of of 300 and the, and the Spartans defending against uh, all of those uh, all of those Persians in that uh, in that bottleneck, but uh, yeah. Anyway, seems like are they actually? Oh, they're they're not they're they're not faster than me. Okay, I'm actually kind of surprised. We have pathfinding six plus one right now, and they are still relatively fast. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to get rid of some of these prisoners. I am swimming in money, so I actually don't even mind about doing that. Let's see if I'm a little bit faster as a result. Yeah, 5.4. Okay, that's a little easier for me. Gonna breathe a little bit easier as a result. And uh, yeah, I, I guess I don't actually need to show you the journey back because they are now giving up. And uh, I will be resting, and then we will be going on a hunt for the remaining Volantis vassals, and they are going to rue the day that they messed with Elias Fremont the Reaper. I had to mouse over to remember. <laughs> Very good. No, I, I knew his name. I just kind of forgot the title, actually, but... Oh, well, never mind. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode, because it was very intense for me. And otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. <laughs>